Now with most knots, the simpler it is, the, the lower pressure it'll snap at. So the more complex you get, generally the stronger it is. So a lot of people, some people think that if you tie a knot, it's not going to break, but it does reduce the strength of the actual of the line itself. So we're going to start with a figure eight, which is basically just a wrap around itself through the loop, making an eight in the line, and that's the loop that we're going to test at the moment. I'm going to show you this with some. So this is 20 pound braid, so it should be breaking at about nine kilos as its full strength, and we'll see what this breaks at. So it's this, the strength of this knot is generally about 60%, so it should be breaking a little bit less than, a lot less than, than 9 kilos. So that broke at 8 kilos, so that's quite stronger than we, um, than you would think. It's, that was a pretty good knot. <laughs> now, that's the simplest one. Go to the spider hitch. Spider hitch is a quite big knot. So, this is how you get... Slip around it, so... I'll do that. I'm going to tie one there. Alright. So to tie these ones, get a nice big loop like that, bend it back on itself, and you get this, and you do hitches around your finger. Generally you do about five or six. I run out of rope, so I'll just do three for the demonstration. Pull it through, they come off like that. There you go, nice loop. That'll pull up, and then from there, you can loop on a motto wind-on leader. And so, as people know, with braid, it'll cut on rocks really easily. Um, it doesn't stretch. So it's always good to have a bit of mono, hang a few metres of mono, um, so that for casting, for bottom bouncing, anything to stop snapping off and stretch. So from this, I can actually loop on a pre-made wind-on leader and have five to 10 metres of, of mono leader, so for those reasons, so they don't break. This one is uh, the simpler. The next one up we'll do is a bimini twist, and that's a bit more complex. So we'll start with the simple one and see what that breaks at. So that broke at 13 and a half kilos, which is above the exceeded the expected 20. So you can see how going up from a figure eight to one of these has actually made the break a lot higher. So you can see how just by increasing the complexity a little bit, you get a lot much better breaking strain. This is the Bimini twist. We can't show you with this because it's um, a little bit more complex. If anyone wants to learn it after, we can show you. It's um. It's, it's more simple than you think. It isn't that hard. It's literally Practice. a lot of wraps around. It, it's wrapping the line around itself. So essentially, it's not really a knot. It's a lot of wraps. And by doing a lot of wraps, you're reducing the, the breaking strain by doing a knot. So we'll show you what we mean. If anyone wants to learn it after, we can, um, we can wrap one up for you. So this is essentially the strongest knot for this. Yeah, so that broke at 10 kilos, so it's actually a little bit less than the spider hitch. Depending on what you're doing, the spider hitch should break a little bit less. Um, every knot's going to be variable by how good you try the knot. So um, the um, spider hitch and the bimini, the two best ones for doing that wind on. Now, anyone that doesn't know how to do a braid to lead a knot, that's probably the most popular knot people want to learn. How to tie a braid onto mono for the reason that you want a little bit of mono at the end of your braid for a stretch, for abrasion resistance on rocks. This is the simplest one, it's called a double uni knot. Um, Jennifer will quickly do a quick one for you with the rope. What you're doing is you're doing a knot over here on the braid side, a knot over here on the mono side, and you're pulling them together and they just pull off each other. And uh, I'll we'll see what I'm done to show you. Cool. Basically. I like to line the two ropes up together with two bits of line. And then I'm going to go over on itself around my fingers and do a whole heap of loops. We'll just do loops three for now. More loops the better, mate. We're about to explain that. So we've got one here we're going to test with eight loops and one with three. Just an example, I'm just going to do three. Same again on this side. Three loops. You end up with two little loops like that, two little coils. You pull them together. They'll pull off each other. So that's the simpler one. So generally this will break at a lower strain. Um, it's supposed to be a 60% rating. So if you've got 20 pound, it should be breaking at 9 kilos. So you'll get 60% of that. So you're breaking at about 5, um, roughly. Alright, so we'll show you that now. Nothing's going to be exactly on the number, but we hopefully get close. 
With braid to leader knots, another thing you get with the more complex knots, they're generally thinner. So when you're casting, something like that, it's not so bad on 20 pound, but if you go up to sort of 80 pound, that knot will get quite bulky um, because you're doing lots of wraps. When we move up to the real complex ones, that's when they get quite thin as well, as well as stronger. So you'll see that in a bit, but um, there's quite a few advantages to learning the better knots. So that broke quite low, so that was at 6 kilo, so that roughs the, roughly the 60% strength that I was talking about. That one there was with, that was with 3 loops, so that was the weaker one. This is, so now we're going to show you the one with 8 loops, and um, we'll sort of hopefully demonstrate how the more, the more you do, um, the, the better your knot's going to be. by just doing another five loops, you increase your knot strength by a lot. Um, all right, this is the one that a lot of people want to learn, the FG knot. This is a very thin knot, so you, what you have to do on talk. Yeah, Keep mate. <laughs> this one we can't show with the rope, like the Bimini twist. What it is, it's lots of wraps around the two lines. So that's why it's it's a hundred. It's actually a hundred percent knot strength. So we should be getting nine kilos plus from the twenty pound line. Um, the reason you can get that is you're not actually tying knots. You're wrapping the braid around the mono a certain amount of times and the braid is actually gripping, it's cutting into the mono as you pull it. Not gonna cut it in enough to snap it, but it'll cut in and, um, and hopefully hold it there. Now, to show you the difference between doing a good FG and a bad FG, like every knot, this one only has 12 wraps. The good one we've got does about 25. So we're doing a half the wraps. This one only has if you want to learn the knot at the end, we'll show you what I mean by the process of the knot. This will only have two half features, so it's two little lock offs at the end, and it doesn't burn the ends. With these, what we do is we like to do a little, get the lighter and run a little bowl at the end of the, the mono. It balls up, and that stops it from slipping through. So this one doesn't have that. So this is, we, you do get some people come in and they'll be saying how, you know, it wasn't 100% knot strength. We'll shoot silly things like that, not enough wraps, not burning the ends. Um, and not doing those half inches, that'll explain it. So this one shouldn't, it won't be 100% if, if it goes to plan. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. So that broke at six kilos. So that's an example of a bad FG knot. If you don't do enough loops. Now we go into the good one. This is 25, you can see it's quite a bit longer, but it's still really thin. So if you're casting for salmon, casting for anything, even whiting, we'll do this on our six pound line all the way up to our 100 pound. It's thin, it will go through your guides really easily compared to that first one that was um, that was quite bulky. So, and like I said, this has got the little, put the lighter and put a little bowl on the end that stops it from slipping through. So all this is is wraps around the, the mono with the braid. And that broke at 10 and a half kilos, when it should be breaking at nine. So that's just showing you how strong that, um, that knot is. So if anyone wants to learn that after, we'll show you that one. Best braid to lead a knot that you can do. Don't think any better. Any strength. Any strength. Any size. Any size, mate. Do anywhere from a wide gear up to my up to my big heavy popping gear, sharp gear. That's it, mate. All these knots are relative. We're doing it with 20 pound because it's easy to break, so we don't yeah. put our foot on the wall. It's all relative percentage wise as it goes up, but it's the we have guys put new braid on, they'll come back next day and say, oh, this braid's crap, I went to cast and everything just flew off and snapped. And 99.9% of the time is just because of a, an incorrect knot or a in, knot tied incorrectly. But the braid will literally cut itself in half. It's as simple as that. It slices, you know, it slices your finger. That's why double the amount of wraps plus two for good luck is imperative. And then you'll never have any dramas. Yep. Yeah. Never, ever. And just to finish it off, the last two knots, guys, we're doing um, just basic tying to a swivel, tying to a hook. Basic knots. We've got two. There's a blood knot and a uni knot. Um, some of you guys are probably familiar with those. Blood knot. Yeah, yeah, blood knot. Okay. So they're the ones at 90% of the fishermen know how to do. Yeah, quite easy ones. Testing to see which one's the strongest for a bit of fun. Just do the blood knot. So that's the blood knot. So you, yeah, so you, you got your jewelry rig. 
You tying your knot onto your swivel. You got your whole rig there, so this will show you which one's probably the better one to use out of strength wise. You got to put a herd on it. It's just taking you to the rig. Forty pound. This is forty pound line, by the way. It's a bit heavier, and it broke at twelve and a half kilo. So. 36. So yeah, so you're looking at about 60%. So yeah, 20 kilo line, um, 12 kilo break. So you're looking about 60% efficiency. Should be a box back for a month. And this is a double unit of a single uni here, which is very similar to the knot that we use for joining, except we're only doing one uni knot and it's forming a loop and tying itself onto the. I can show that. So that broke 12 and a half. So the uni knot was a bit stronger than the um, than the blood knot. So if you really want to get, if you, well, we can show you the difference. The difference is quite minimal, but um, the uni does have a slightly better breaking strength. So, so the uni knot, same thing where I'm doubling it over and still wrapping it around my fingers, forming those coils around there, and then just pulling to that tight, and that forms my loop. And simply, I'll have my swivel in there. That, and that was the strongest of the two. Very similar to Hangman, isn't it? Very similar, yeah. yeah. They've all got different names, one different loop. Yeah, no, it makes the same. Yeah. 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 So if you want to do yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure you do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, does anyone want to learn an FG or just the double? Oh, no, we're a full one. <laughs>